I made $855 today, but before I run through my trades, if this chart right here made you lose a lot of money, if you blew your account because of these rate candles, if you're feeling really anxious about this, and if this has seriously affected your life, you need to join me because you are trading the wrong way. And if you have not blew your account yet, continue trading like you're gambling. One day you will, and it's going to ruin your life. So trust me, reach out to me. If you're looking to become a better trader, for the year 2022. And if you are in some serious trouble and you have uh, open positions that you're struggling with right now, uh, reach out to me. Let me see how much I can help you here, even on YouTube. You know, I'm here to help, especially if this has affected you. Uh, 2022 is not just going to be like this. I can guarantee you it's not just a 2% correction. Uh, we may even get 8%. 10% corrections, market crashes this year. Uh, so if you're trading it wrongly, uh, if you're just leaving it to chance, if you're not assessing your risks, uh, this year is going to be really bad for you. So join me quickly, uh, reach out to me, whatever means. Now, this is an opportunity to start afresh, uh, trade the right way, and just make some money in this year. Stop losing stupid money like this. Stop giving away your money to people who trade properly. So if you're like that, this is probably the best gift that a Jerome Powell can give you. These red candles early this year, it's going to be quite bad in 2022, I can tell you that. So reach out to me, join me, you know, whatever it takes. Have to make a decision, be a better trader. Be a better trader, not a gambler. So yeah, serious note over. Let's uh, run through the trade. Well, the day started off uh, with very low volumes. You know, we are always consolidating. And as I told members that this is because you know, obviously we are opening up an area of indecision. Right? Traders are on the sidelines. And especially also because we knew that the FOMC minutes uh, release will be at 2 p.m., which we see all the volume and the volatility, and of course, all the selling pressure that started from 2 p.m. onwards. Uh, so everyone was on the sidelines uh, during this period of time. Now, some members uh, made some good money with scalping, so that's great. Uh, that's also one way that you can make money quickly, a very decisive way of making money early. So that's one method in the toolbox, and uh, we want to have as many tools as we can to equip ourselves, isn't it? Um, and of course, uh, we see uh, a large green candle actually at the start before it all turned red. So I scalped for some calls early in the day. I uh, made about $35 here, close some for early profits, uh, but got stopped out on my next ones. And I waited to 12.45 before I traded again, around 12.43. When I saw these large red candles, I decided to buy a put here. I'll scalp for this put, uh, but once again, uh, my trading hasn't been up to par this few days. I'm trying to adapt to some new changes this year. Uh, so I made, a, once again, a very bad stop loss here, especially when I was on mobile. I uh, had to uh, attend to some uh, family matters uh, that required my personal attention. So I was on mobile throughout the entire day. Made some really, really bad mistake here. Once again, got stopped out early. $9 loss right here. I think a $10 loss. Made back uh, some puts here. I repositioned at around 1 p.m. At around 1 p.m. I repositioned back for some puts here and did a quick scalp here uh, to make back some uh, $33 here, right here. I made another loss. I made a call here around 1.15. Oh, it's a great entry. You know, it's a great entry. I made a call here, uh, but I got stopped out quite early around this candle here. I got stopped out here around $52 loss. I uh, could have closed it right here, scalped here, and it would have given me at least a few hundred dollars. We're you know, trying to adapt to also trading on mobile, which I do not recommend. Uh, this is what's going to happen. And then, of course, the blockbuster candles came in. Now, first things first, I missed this large candle. 
and it's difficult to be predicting whether it will go up or down unless you have insider's information. Uh, when the minutes was released, we had analysts and reporters just pouring through the documents, trying to find some key phrases that would either suggest that it's uh, good or bad news. So the volatility went up at the start. There was, uh, was a large green candle at first uh, before around two or three minutes. I have no idea how these people read so quickly, uh, but they probably had uh, some prior information and then the sell-off commenced. Now, I didn't get on this trade immediately, right? It's as good as gambling if you're making a trade right here. Uh, of course, unless you have insider's information. So it's possible to be catching the trade, right? You have high volume here. And then when you see large selling pressure, another large red candle here, and you don't see the buyers appearing. Now, this is just good price action, right? I got into the action at around uh, 2.06 right here. Right, and I quickly closed as fast as I could around uh, 215. Around here, when this green candle appeared, I closed. So I scalped about $145 profit here. So even in a large sell off, I was still scalping because I wasn't able to put a stop loss on my mobile efficiently. So I did some quick scalping. Of course, if you held on and you uh, had puts, you could have went down all the way here. So every time I see some buying pressure, I closed it as soon as I could. I took my second trade here uh, at the round 221. I repositioned after the green candle lost uh, its uh, buying pressure because you see the volume is also extremely low. Uh, when the sellers commenced, uh, the sell off again, right? I repositioned myself. Now this one uh, was a good one. I managed to make uh, about $424 because it went all the way down around uh, two, two forty nine, I think. Yeah, around here when the green candles appeared again, you know, uh, like what I told you, uh, just close it as, as fast as I can uh, just to sculpt some profits right here. This was also a critical level, so it was a good time to close it because you see the buying pressure just uh, continued. Right, so let's uh, discuss a bit about uh, where to from here, right? And how are we supposed to trade uh, from, from here on? So firstly, we take a look at the stock heat map. I want to see how bad damage is from this correction. Uh, as you can see, while it's not all red, not every one is affected by it. So the companies that are more or less affected by it are your big tech companies, very dependent on the money supply in the economy for the high valuation. And of course, their market cap is very dependent on the money supply uh, in the economy. So they are in trouble because the Feds, well, in summary, what's happening is that the Feds are looking to increase the interest rates sooner than expected. So that's what's going, that's what's happening. The market is just pricing in uh, this uh, possibility. Uh, Powell is going to speak only next week when he has a, a congressional interview uh, about his reappointment. So that's next week. Uh, prior to that, I don't think uh, we, were, we are going to have anything official regarding this. They're just going to let the market decide and run until next week, uh, where he will most probably uh, just assuage the market, you know, uh, make things better. So this next few days, we may expect some volatility. Uh, we may expect uh, some fear. Uh, so let's see the reaction uh, from from here. But largely, uh, the meeting minutes uh, did not change much from the original trajectory. It's just some very vague words about uh, accelerating things. Uh, so we shall see. There's nothing concrete there. I think uh, we shall wait for more concrete information. But this is just pricing in the risks of that level of vagueness in the market. So if you take a look at SPY, if you want to take a look at the weekly charts, uh, we are still, uh, believe it or not, in a bullish formation. Um, and if you take a look at the daily charts, uh, it's still very healthy because we are still uh, not even close to the 50-day moving average, the 100-day moving average, or even the 200-day moving averages. Uh, so we are still able to base uh, for a bullish run if we want to. Uh, of course, not suggesting that there, there will be a bullish run, but we are still in that technical formation and we must recognize that. Um, so this is all just information that we digest. 
Um, it's not good or bad information. It's just information. Uh, we have to be neutral about it and work accordingly to it. Uh, so today, what's most important is that we need to know how the market is going to react to this. Is this large red candle an overreaction? Uh, so do we see buyers coming in? So pre-market is also very important. Uh, where uh, the support lies is also very important. So in my key levels report, in our daily brief, uh, we have some key support levels. Uh, we want to see buyers aggregating at the key levels and then bring the chart up if it is an overreaction. So that's very important as well. And let's not forget that these are fantastic value territory. You see what happened on the 20th of December. Uh, there was a major sell-off. Now this sell-off is even bigger than this gap down twice consecutively uh, before it reached value territory here. And then look at how the big money just bought off uh, this value right here. And it made millions or hundreds of millions easily with uh, these just in one week with this trade. So this is also a possibility as we enter value territory. Now, why do I suggest that? Because here, yeah, this is not a full market correction, not yet anyway. Uh, so it's just big tech that's uh, being affected. Uh, if they enter into value zone, especially Tesla, you know, they have a very strong following of people that just incessantly buying once it goes under 1000. Uh, so let's just see how it moves from the next two days and uh, for the market to react until Powell speaks officially next week. Now, also, if we take a look at uh, the treasury bonds, right, these is a, this is a five year treasury bond. Now, when the stock market goes down, treasury bonds go up because this is a safe instrument where people put their money in, right? It's expected five years going up, 10 years going up. But this is the interesting one I want to bring out. Uh, this is 20 years. Now, it's not going up. Uh, this means that there is not uh, too much negativity about the current market sentiment. Um, if you want to see how much it has gone up previously, uh, you have to go to right here. April, around March and April of uh, 2020, where SPY really dumped and uh, took a strong market correction about uh, well, easily 20% during that period of time. Uh, so this is this is serious, all right? If the 20 year treasury bond has gone up to a high level, you know that the market is in trouble. But yeah, so far, not that bad. You know, it's not even going up after yesterday. So we have to see the reaction regarding this as well. But uh, as expected, the shorter term treasury ETFs, uh, they went up because this is a great escape. It's a great shelter. Now, most of these trades are automated, by the way. You know, uh, it's programmed uh, in uh, institutions that uh, if a sell-off happen, you know, they transfer their money over here. So nothing to worry about. Now, in the daily brief, what we are going to explain is uh, what are the levels we need to look at if the bulls want to continue some recovery. If this is an overreaction, and also some possibilities of swing trading uh, that we can do. Now, this is perfect for swing trading. I tell you, this is fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, day traders, we know, you know, we thrive on scalping, we thrive on uh, daily uh, volume and price action, you know, but markets like this, it's perfect for swing trading. You can even get back your profits within the week. You don't even have to wait for a month. Uh, so it's perfect here. We want to wait uh, and see if you're swing trading, there's no rush into a trade. Unlike scalping, you've got to rush decisively. But when we are swing trading, uh, we want to wait and see this is a impossible position to enter. I just want to reiterate, uh, if you think uh, it's going to go lower, you don't buy puts here, you buy puts at resistance, and you buy calls at supports. Now, that's, that's, that's the way to make money. Uh, you don't buy uh, calls or puts in the middle of nowhere, right? You want to know where the support is, where the resistance is, the, then you commit. So always be patient. Uh, unless, of course, you're day trading. Uh, it's not so much harder. You're paying attention to the price action. You're paying attention uh, to the volume. You're paying attention to uh, the swings within the day, where the buyers are, where the sellers are, and where the imbalance is within the day. Now, that's slightly different uh, compared to swing trading where we're looking at trends, where we're looking at uh, where 
where uh, the overall market is moving. So this is a great start to the year, at least to me. Um, I don't want to sound too excited because uh, I know that a lot of people were burnt by this, uh, but I reached out to members and uh, so far everyone who texted me made thousands of dollars. So wow, I'm, I'm impressed. And uh, yeah, but hey, reach out to me, man. If you're uh, struggling with this, you know, I'm here to help, whether you're a member or not, you know, if you chance upon this video and, um, you know, you need some help, you need some counsel, hey, reach out to me, man. Uh, don't let the stock market destroy your life. You know, I'm here to help. Uh, that's why I started this channel. So thank you for watching and members, I'll see you at a daily brief later. Thank you.